What's up you guys? Welcome to my story time video. Now this story time video is gonna be about the time when my co-worker stabbed me in my back. Now this all happened back when I was working at Long John Silver's and before y'all say anything, yes I know, I bring up Long John Silver's in almost all of my story times. But hey, I can't help it. I mean, he used to go down up at Long John Silver's and I still got a whole bunch of more story times about Long John Silver's. Stay tuned for those stories. But anyway, let's continue on with the story. So I was a team leader at Long John Silver's, in case you haven't noticed from my previous story time videos. And I was helping out at different locations. And at this particular location, I had met two wonderful people. And I was helping out the store manager. And the store manager, I'm gonna call her Emily. So my first day at her location, she said, how you doing, Charles? My name is Emily. I said, hey, nice to meet you, Emily. And let me introduce you to my cook. Come on over here. So I'm walking over there and I see the cook. She at the cooking station. She said, this is my cook, Deborah. I said, hey, nice to meet you, Deborah. She said, hey, nice to meet you, Charles. Emily said, she's gonna be my team leader one day. And uh, it's gonna be two weeks for me to train her. And after two weeks, you can go back to your location. I said, oh, okay, only two weeks. Two weeks, and she's my number one cook, and she follows instruction, and she knows how to do just about everything. I said, oh, that's good. And she said, her customer service skills is excellent. I said, oh, that's good. And she said, and my other team leader, she was just a pain in the neck. I said, why did she quit on you, Emily? Oh, she had a bad attitude. First of all, she was stealing money. She didn't want to follow instructions. She wanted to do what she wanted to do. And I said, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. She said, fine, I just won't come back to work. That's why you here, Charles. I said, oh, okay, so I'm her replacement. Yeah, you her replacement, temporarily, because Deborah gonna take over in two weeks. I said, okay, so make me proud, Charles. I sure will. So me and Deborah was working together, and I used to love working with Deborah. Deborah used to have me laughing. She was just a wonderful person with a great spirit. She had a beautiful spirit. I used to love working with Deborah all the time. And so, Two weeks had passed by, and she went to go take her team leader test at another Long John Silver's. And a week after that, we had got an email saying that she was not certified to be a team leader because she had a misdemeanor on her background. So she was very upset. She was just crying like, <laughs> I really want to be a team leader. <laughs> it was say, it's all right, Deborah. it's gonna be all right. Don't worry, Deborah. I'ma still give you your 40 hours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emily. I really want to be a team leader so bad. So, you know, that really hurt her. So, a few months after that, business was slowing down and hours was getting cut. And of course, Deborah wasn't making the same amount of money that she was making when I first started helping out at that particular location. And so, Deborah was just struggling. And so, she finally just back down and she just had to just break down and ask me for $20. She said, Charles, can I please borrow $20? I don't normally ask you for money, but can I please borrow $20? I promise, Charles, I promise I'll pay you on next pay period. I don't want to ask Emily for it because I just can't stand her. She's such a freaking large, so I can't stand that help that dirty snake. I said, well, I got you, devil, no problem. Thank you so much, Charles. So I gave her $20. She said, I promise I'll pay you back on next pay period. I said, I believe you. So we got paid. She paid me the $20. And a week later, she said, Charles, can I borrow another $20? I promise I'll pay you back on next pay period. Gave her $20. On next pay period, she paid me back. So it was like a pattern. And so she got tired of asking me for money. She said, you know what, Charles? I got to do something about this. I got to find me something different. So Emily decided to quit Long John Silver's and go over to the zoo. So she became a supervisor at the zoo. And when she became a supervisor at the zoo, she got Deborah on at the zoo with her. And then she also got me on at the zoo. So it's like the three amigos working at the Houston Zoo. Me, Deborah, and Emily all up at the zoo. Emily's the supervisor. Deborah, she's the order taker, but she was the lead order taker. Like she was in charge of this particular restaurant, but she wasn't supervisor, but she was in charge of, you know, the workers under her had to listen to her and I was just a helper. I wasn't a cashier, no, but I was just a helper and I was listening to her as well. So Emily had got fired a few months of me working at the zoo. And after Emily got fired, Deborah just started talking about her so bad, coming. that's what she get. Glad she got fired. I said, Deborah, how can you say something like that? Oh, I'm just glad she got fired. Charles, you can't give away a whole bunch of free food to some people that used to work at the zoo and not think that she's not gonna get in trouble. You think just because you're a supervisor, 
act like a supervisor. She, she's just stupid. She's stupid. She wants to be everybody's friend. You can't be everybody's friend when you're in that position, Charles. What is wrong with her, Charles? I said, I oh, don't know. If I ever became a supervisor, I'm not going to try to be anybody's friend. I said, yeah, I feel you on that. So Emily got fired and she had got another job, you know, like two weeks after that. So I was proud of her that she got another job. And then a couple of weeks after her getting a new job, something very, very drastic happened in my life. My mom passed away. And after my mama had passed away, I, I didn't think that a whole bunch of my coworkers at the zoo was gonna be there for me. Man, there was so many people there for me. The day that she passed away, Deborah called my phone and I was shocked because I didn't think that she actually cared about me as a person. I thought that, you know, she was gonna be like, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. You know, if you ever need anything, you know, just call me. You know, cause that's what a lot of people say when you lose somebody real close to you. They say, if you ever need anything, just call me. You ask, well, I can need, you know, I can use about 40, 50 dollars. Well, I don't have it, wish I had it. You know, just lies like that. But no, not Deborah. Deborah, she was actually there for me. It was Deborah and her friend, Jessica. Jessica and Deborah, they were there for me when my mom had passed away. They actually took me out to Papa Seafood at my previous job that I used to work at. You guys saw the story time on that. But anyway, they took me over to Papa Seafood, bought me something to eat, and they took me over to Walmart, bought me a few groceries. So I was just happy that Deborah and Jessica was actually there for me. And so we hug and everything. She was like, Charles, I'm sorry for your loss. I wish we could make it to the funeral, but unfortunately we had to work. I said, no problem. But a few of the coworkers did make it to the funeral. They sent flowers, they sent money, they sent, you know, get well cards, sorry for your lost cards. I mean, it was just, it was just a wonderful feeling to know that my coworkers at the zoo actually cared for me. I didn't know that I was that important of a person. I just thought I was just a helper at the zoo, but unfortunately, I think I was a little more than just a helper. So Deborah was there for me. I said, so Deborah's actually a good person. She's a good person. So a few months after that, she became a supervisor. I said, so, you know, she a cool person. You know, Deborah, she was there for me when my mama died. I was there for her at Long John Silver. So I always got cut. I was giving her money. She was paying me back. I was helping her out. She helped me out when I lost my mama. Now she a supervisor. She gonna be a cool supervisor. I'm gonna listen to everything she gotta say, and we gonna be all right. Until one day, I was working at Trading Post. Now, Trading Post is a stand where we sell ice cream, Jamba Juice, pretzels, fountain drinks, and water bottles, uh, fruit shoots, all kinds of things. Popcorn, cotton candy, all kinds of things. And so it was just me and the cashier working there. And the cashier, I'm gonna call her Brittany. So me and Brittany working at the Trading Post stand, and we had a line out the door. So it was Deborah's second day of being a supervisor, her second day of being a supervisor. So she came up in there, she saw that we was busy. Okay, let me just tell y'all this. Me and Brittany did not get a break that day. So Deborah comes up in there, she said, oh my goodness, you guys are busy. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> we all, you guys are, y'all are swamped. How come it's just two of y'all? Because this is on the weekend. So usually on the weekend, it's three people working at Trader Post. But unfortunately, it was two people on this day. So we were struggling, you know, and it was hard because I was a helper. So I got to scoop the ice cream out. I got to make the Jamba Juice. Then I got to make some more mix, some Jamba Juice mix in the back and pour it in the machine. And then the cashier, her job is to make the drinks make the popcorn and take the uh, money. So that sounds like an easy job, but it's not easy when you got a lot up to go and people asking for a whole bunch of stuff. It's not that easy. And so Deborah came in there, I think it was like around four o'clock she came up in there. She said, oh my goodness, y'all are busy. Let me help y'all out. So she helped out for about 10 to 20 minutes. She was like, well, I gotta go back and check on my other stands because supervisors, uh, supervisors at the zoo, they job is to check different stands. They gotta go in and check different stands. And then they got a supervisor, make sure, you know, everything going smooth, make sure the customer's satisfied. So she had to go check on her other thing. So me and Brittany, the only ones still up in there on that day. And uh, one of the cash control workers, the cash control, they like in charge, they like the manager over the money. One of the cash control workers actually came in and helped out for about 30 minutes. Then she had to go back and see if some other cashiers needed some change and needed a break because they also did breaks. Cash control workers, they gave breaks, restroom breaks, lunch breaks. And they also was the person that gave the cashier change whenever they needed change. So she had to go back and check on the other cashier. So it's just me and Brittany still holding it down up the trading post. 
So Deborah comes in, she say, at six o'clock, I want y'all to close the doors. Y'all close the doors. That last customer that's in the door, y'all tell them to come up in there and y'all lock those doors and y'all let the customers out when they were to leave. She said, I'm gonna be back in here at 6.30 to check on y'all. And we said, okay, cool. So it's six o'clock, as soon as six o'clock hit, I went over to the door, I said, all right, so wrap now. Lock them doors. I said, I'm sorry, some more customers trying to come in. I'm sorry, we're closed, I'm so sorry. Boom, lock the door. So we still had a whole bunch of customers in there, so we take care of them customers. As soon as we had an empty room with no customers at all, we proceeded to sweep. So I'm sweeping the floor. It's a whole bunch of stuff on the floor too. We had napkins, uh, straws on the floor, empty water bottles on the floor, empty popcorn containers on the floor, popcorn, kernels, popcorn, all over the floor. It was just a mess. Uh, it was just a big mess. So I'm just sweeping. Mind you, we have concrete. On, in that sand, it's nothing but concrete. So with concrete, you gotta like sweep. It's kind of hard to sweep concrete. It's not like floor tiles when you sweep it and just go in a dustpan that easy. No, with concrete, you sweep it dirt, dust, all kinds of stuff in there. And so we were sweeping, I'm sweeping. Brittany, she cleaned out the popcorn machine. She washed the dishes in the bag. And we was hungry, so Deborah comes in at 6.30. She said, you guys almost done? We weren't nowhere close to being done. I say, no, we're not almost done, but I am a little hungry. Mind you, the zoo closes at 7 o'clock, so it's 6.30. She closed down at 6 o'clock, but it was just us two. We trying to sweep, we trying to fill up the Jamba Juice machine and everything. And she said, well, I'm gonna get y'all some chicken tenders. So she go to the restaurant, get us some chicken tenders, some french fries. We eat and work, eat and work, and wash dishes and eat. Brittany, she cleaned out the popcorn machine and eat the chicken tenders. So next thing you know, 7 o'clock kids, and Deborah comes up in there. How come y'all still up in here? What's going on? What's going on? Now, I don't like this. It's seven o'clock. You guys should have been done a long time ago. What's going on? What's taking so long? I'm annoyed and I'm ready to go home. So I'm frustrated because the first of all, I didn't get a break. We were shorthanded. I had customers in my face from nine o'clock all the way to six o'clock. And you come to, you came to me and asked them why we still in there, knowing that we were shorthanded. And so, Brittany got to ask, so Brittany was like, well, what you mean while we still here? It's just me and Charles working. You know, we got to wash the dishes, we got to fill up the jumper juice. I don't want to hear that. Don't both of y'all talk to me at the same time. Make sure y'all clean up this place and hurry up and get out, because I'm ready to go home. I said, I don't know who you think you talking to, but you got the wrong one, you got the wrong one. I said, don't forget where you came from. I said, because at Long John Silvers, you couldn't even be a team leader. So you got lucky and got the position up at the zoo as a supervisor. So don't forget where you came from, because I used to be your manager. I said, you done made me mad now. Well, if you want to have that attitude, you can go home. I said, you know what? You sure all right. So I had the broom and I threw it down on the floor. I said, I'm going home. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I ain't got time for you. You ain't lost your mind. You don't know who you talking to. You ain't lost your mind. You lost your mind. You don't know who you're dealing with. So I, I walk on now and I'm power walking. I'm power walking over to the office. I'm mad as hell. She done pissed me the hell off. So I walk over to the office. I get to the office. The manager say, Charles, come to my office. I said, oh, you know what? I want to talk to you anyway because I'm mad. I said, Deborah, that made me mad. He said, calm down, take a seat. I said, no, I'm not finna sit down. I said, cause my blood boiling. I need to stand up because the adrenaline pumping right now. I need to stand up and I need to tell you. I, I'm, I need to tell you what kind of supervisor you got. Okay, just tell you this, Charles. She's my supervisor, you have to respect her. I said, well, she needs to respect me because to get respect, you gotta earn it. Well, you're just a helper. I said, excuse me, I'm just a what? You're just a helper, she's my supervisor. I said, okay, well, just because she a supervisor, that mean that she not lying? That mean that she telling the truth? Nah, 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 nah. Okay, so I, I believe her. Her word is against yours. You need to listen to her. I said, so you're not gonna write her up? You gonna write me up? And I said, I was gonna write you up. I said, you know what, fine, and I don't wanna talk about it, I'm done. I said, and you better hope I show up to work tomorrow. It'll, it'll be a cold day in hell if I show up to work tomorrow. I said, you know what, I can't let the white miss my money. I will show up to work, you know. The next day at work, she didn't even bring it up. She just apologized about, you know, just for being a complete idiot, you, you know. But she didn't bring up, you know, the hatred that she had towards me. But we had a good day, and she was those kind of that type of person that talked about you in front of your face, I mean behind your back and smiling in your face. But I found out that she was talking about me months later, saying that I was like a female, I gossiped like a female and everything. I'm like, what's she talking about gossip like a female? And when I confronted her about it, I said, yeah, a co-worker tells me that you've been saying I gossip like a female, so 
you got something to say to me? They're lying. Charles, I did not say that. Don't believe them. They're lying. I said, well, you used to talk about Emily behind her back when she worked here. So, no, no. They're lying. They're liars. They're liars. So to make a long story short, I don't work at the zoo no more. And I blocked Deborah on Facebook. I don't want nothing else to do with her. And she didn't even believe in God. She believed in witchcraft. Every time I used to say, you know, that's a blessing, she used to always say, don't talk to me about that golf stuff. Don't talk to me about that golf stuff. I believe witchcraft. I believe witchcraft. Don't bring that golf stuff up to me. So a person like that don't need to read my life. So you guys, I really hope you enjoyed this story time when my coworker stabbed me in my back. Really, she didn't really stab me in my back. She was just the person that talked, talked about me behind my back and she forgot where she came from and thought she could talk to me in kind of way, but I wasn't having that. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this story and stay tuned for more story times. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and just have a wonderful day. Peace out.